Hi guys, my name is Lara and I will be demonstrating to you how to construct a metal zip on Adobe Illustrator version 19. So first we need to open up a new artboard. So we go into File, New, then everything else is custom. We want with size, you want it to be A4, just adjust that and also the side orientation. I just prefer working that way. Then we select OK. Once it's loaded, we will first be making the zipper teeth. So select the rectangle tool on the left hand side and you just click it there. So you want the width to be 2.5. You can see I've done this before, 2.5 millimeters. Just delete the excess there. If it doesn't have millimeters as the increment, you want to change that to millimeters. Then click tab and the height will be five millimeters. Then we'll select OK. It will be in a small selection in the page and what you do is you just zoom up on that and move over to where it is. In order to make this a little bit more realistic we're going to click the white arrow key here which is the direct selection tool and over here where you see the circles we'll just draw that in slightly to make it a little bit more realistic. Then next what we'll do is have the same white arrow key. We'll select the side anchors until you have these pulls and you'll drag it in until it hits that edge of that just so that it's consistent on both sides. We'll do this on the same on the opposite side until we get to that edge. Gives us a nice consistent look. Just a little bit further on that side. Now what we'll do is black arrow, we'll select this area here. We'll go over to our swatches panel. Then we'll go to the library, go down to metal, and we'll select the silver metal for that. Then we'll close out of that. Once that's done, you want to go Command K, go into Units, ensure that that is millimeters, then back into General and make it two millimeters here. Once that's done, click OK. We will highlight this using the black arrow key. Then you need to click Alt and the right arrow key to the side. Then what we will do is just rotate that Below. Swing it around and just arrow it down once. You may need to just select that little bit to the side and drag it down just slightly. What we'll do once that's done is highlight this area, right click group. We will then hit the brushes panel, scroll down and we can drop this into the swatches panel there. It wants to be a pattern brush. Once you select pattern brush, Click OK. This will create the new pattern brush for us. We then scroll up. We don't want any auto-centered uh, auto sides. And this will be teeth. Then select OK. We will zoom out. Uh, also on the left hand side you need to grab the line segment tool. Select the area in which you want to pop it. And then select it there. Double click. click and just make it slightly smaller, I'd say to about 60%. We'll then click OK, apply to this stroke. So it's just asking you if you want to apply it to the stroke that you've previously made, which is yes, apply, we'll zoom out. It's looking quite good. Just move this from our artboard to the side. Next we'll be making the pool. So you will select the rounded rectangle tool. Select the area in which you want to make it about that big. Once again I do want to make it a little bit more curved in terms of that bottom there, a little bit less, probably to about there. We then will grab the same tool that we used just then and probably coming up about halfway. We want to select this area but I do at the same time want to make this a little bit less rounded. What I'll do is I'll just move that down slightly. So select it with your black arrow key, also known as the selection tool, and then you'll hit Alt and arrow it to the side three times. Put it over slightly, select that arrow, just ensuring that these are even. Once this is done, you want to highlight this area Select uh, the effects, then scroll down to Pathfinder, click Pathfinder and should come up with the selection box here. You want to hit Divide, 
ensuring that all objects are overlapping, otherwise it will not divide. You then want to right click, ungroup, and pull away any of these excess areas that we don't need. So this is the beginning of the pool. Once this is done, we will select the rectangle tool again, create the size of the pool that we want for this. Probably about that big, just ensuring that it is in the middle. Do you want to make it slightly wider? Then we'll click the rect selection tool, move it over slightly so it is centered, showing an even amount on both sides. Then I'll select the rectangle tool again, just selecting where I want to take out areas, probably about here. Just want to fix this up here at the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll grab the white anchor tool, sorry, the arrow tool, select this area once, drag it in slightly just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look. Select it once on the other side and drag it in slightly as well. There we are. Once this is done, just want to fix up this area on this side. A little bit too much. Once that's done, we'll then select Tangle Tool down here and fill this area here too. What we want to do as well is select the large area here then select the second box and then the third and drag it out of the way. Once again, I want to use the Pathfinder tool, divide, then I will right click the area, ungroup, remove the areas that I don't need over here, drop them down and paste this back onto where we were working. You can see it's starting to come together quite well. Drop that, just make sure it is in the middle. Like that. Oh, sorry guys. We will then select a piece that we used before, like this. Um, the white arrow key, just drag in those sides slightly. And just drag in these sides again as well. So this is probably just going to reshape it slightly just to give it a little bit more of a realistic look like this. Then I'm going to select it on here. Might just make it a little bit bigger. And that's it. So zoom out. Hmm. Just going to make it slightly bigger, guys. Pulling it down on the right hand side. Now that we've made that, I'm just going to grab the area here, make a bit of zip tape in there, hold shift in order to keep it straight, zoom out and we'll select that area there. You can see that it is showing up here on top, which we don't want because it doesn't look like it's proper zip. So what I'll do is I'll right hand click this go down to arrange and I want to send that to the back. Now you can see it's properly proportioned on top and that's how you make a zip. Also what you can do is you can also add a little bit here at the bottom just in order to make it look finished and complete. Thanks guys!